Though structural assemblies serve a very important role in a building's function and stability, they can also be harnessed to create interesting forms and designs. The Toronto Dominion Centre, designed by Mies van der Rohe in the 1960s, is located in the heart of Toronto's financial district. We will be specifically investigating the structural elements of the original three buildings, including the single-storey banking pavilion, the 46-storey north tower, and the 56-storey bank tower. The buildings are all black painted steel structures with concrete floors, bronze glass, and steel I-beam mullions attached to the exterior facades. The base of the towers expose large structural pillars that seem to raise the building above ground level. Large glass panels help the tower's lower structures effectively act as a functional yet aesthetic design strategy that opens up the buildings to the exterior courtyard. However, the remaining basic structure assembly is completely hidden underneath the facades that are instead dominated by the mullions. This cladding system uses a lot of materials that seem to be very heavy as a structural element and is barely noticeable from ground level. The pavilion is much more interesting as a structural system in comparison. The long steel beams and glazing surrounding the building help to create a permeable space for the public to feel welcomed from the street while still being connected to the city. On the other hand, I.M. Pei's Bank of China Tower, built later in 1990 in Hong Kong, takes a different approach to structural integration, as the area is prone to typhoons, the design of the building needed to strongly consider an innovative method to hold up a 70-story tall building in such harsh conditions. The steel and concrete structure covered in reflective glass is comprised of four triangular vertical shafts that extrude from a square base at different heights. The shape helps to resist high-velocity winds because of its sharp angled corners and a figure that slims down as the altitude rises. However, what is really interesting is how the use of diamond-shaped cross braces along with the quadrant design result in a tower that uses much less steel and overall material compared to many other tall structures. The cross braces are also represented on the facades of the structure in daylight and light up as night falls. Even considering the difference in era between the two complexes, IMP's approach to a decorative and symbolic yet functional structural system outdoes Mies van der Rohe's heavy and utilitarian design. However, it does not diminish the overall successes of both buildings architecturally in each context.